we've spent the last seven months over in Europe and England. And you know, you turn on the television. Turn on the telly, for those of you from the UK. And you see sin promoted in the most obnoxious places. I mean, I can't believe that we see homosexuality in advertising for banks, for restaurants, on television shows that have nothing to do with relationships. Because what used to be prohibited is now promoted. And that's the truth. I read and I am reading from the New American Standard Version of the Bible. But in those deeds of the flesh that Paul is talking about, there's a couple that I really want you to have an understanding of because it's so important. Where the New American Standard said immorality, the Greek word that's used there is porneia. That's where we get our English word pornography. When he talked about sorcery, the Greek word that's used there is pharmakia, which is drugs. The King James talks about murder. Now, I don't know how well you know the scriptures, but it might do you well to go to Revelation chapter 9 and see that God talks about in those last days that there will be, and those are exactly the Greek words that are used, there will be pornography, there will be drugs, and there will be murder, and men will not repent of them. That's the time we're living in. That's why this study is so important, is to understand the difference between the deeds of the flesh and the deeds of the Spirit, or the fruit of the Spirit, and we need to be examining ourselves and making sure that we are living a life that is pleasing to God. You don't want to find out the hard way. Remember a couple of weeks ago we talked about in the end of the Sermon on the Mount when Jesus said people come to him. People come to him. Not just people. People who will believe that they are the servants of God saying, Lord, Lord, look what I did in your name. I did this in your name. I did that in your name. And he says, depart from me, you evil ones. I never knew you. How can you get so deceived? The simple answer is pride. You know, I, I don't want to rehash what I've talked about so much in the past, but it is important. Paul talks about the fact that salvation is the free gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Well, those people who go to Jesus on that day of judgment and say, look what I did, they are boasting in their works, which can not save. Salvation is the free gift of God, bought by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. But I'm not going to But the scriptures say, in these perilous last days, men will not repent. Have you heard any issues with drugs? With pornography? With murder? Well, if you haven't, if you turn on the news, now we, you, you know, we have 24-hour-a-day news from all over the world. Turn it on. You know what you're going to see? Drugs, pornography, murder. That's exactly what you're going to see. And it should be a clue to the times we live in. And you need to be prepared for the coming of the Lord. Okay. The people in the world, the people who are walking according to the flesh, see, they don't understand. Surely they don't even care that God spoke through the prophet Isaiah so long ago and said, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who substitute darkness for light and light for darkness who substitute bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. That's Isaiah 5.20. We're living in a time when what's evil is called good, what's good is called evil. Understand, we are in the last days, the perilous last days. You see, that's the generational curse that flows through the offspring of Adam for all time, for all time. And there's only one way to break that generational curse. If the sins of the father are visited upon children, the only way you can deal with generational curse is to change fathers. I changed fathers. I was born again. Right? So our ability to live that new life, okay? is demonstrated when Nicodemus, the Pharisee, came to Jesus Christ. He came in the dark of night because he was uh, concerned about who would see him talking to Jesus. So he came in the night to question Jesus. 
And Jesus answered and said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John 3, 3. Unless you change fathers, unless you accept that gift of being born again by a father who is in heaven, who is spotless, who is holy, who is pure, who has no sin to pass on to you, has no curse. The only thing that God the Father can pass on to you is blessings and righteousness through the work of his son, Jesus Christ. And then he went on to say to Nicodemus, he said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. John 3, 6. The redeemed of the Lord who have been born again then have a new heavenly father whose spirit. That's what Jesus said John in John 4, right? Our father is spirit. All I want to do is worship. All I want to do is love you. All I want to do is lay my hand at your feet. As I lift my hands to heaven, let your fire fall down on me. Rekindle the fire within me. Jesus, once again. Oh, Chevrolet, oh, Chevrolet, we serve you.